Are you new to freelancing on Upwork? Are you burning through all your Upwork connects but never winning any jobs? Yes! Yes! Listen, I completely get it. Getting your first job on Upwork can be a really difficult and stressful process. Personally, it took me around three to four months before I got my first job. I was doing so many things wrong and honestly, I just didn't know how to stand out on Upwork. My goal is to help you avoid the mistakes that I made and share everything with you that has worked for me in getting me to where I am today as a freelancer. With the insane number of people filing for unemployment this year due to business closures and layoffs, now is a better time than ever to get started freelancing. Before you listen to any of my tips, let me give you a little background and history of my journey on Upwork as a freelancer. I personally wouldn't listen to tips from someone who couldn't prove their success on Upwork, and you shouldn't either. There's tons of videos from freelancers providing Upwork tips, yet they have very little earnings and they're not even active on the platform. My profile is linked in the description of every single Upwork video that I create. Everything is public on my profile, including my earnings. It's important for me to actually show you results rather than just telling you what to do without being able to back it up. I got my first job on Upwork in May of 2016. Since then, I've made almost $600,000, worked on 113 jobs, worked over 7,000 hours, and I've been featured in Upwork marketing campaigns as one of the top freelancers on Upwork, including a TV commercial most recently to advertise Upwork's talent grants program in support of businesses working to counter the impact of COVID-19. I'm now one of the top freelancers on all of Upwork. Beginning a freelance career on Upwork is easily one of the best decisions that I've made in my entire life. I'm completely in control of the money that I make and I've developed my skill set at a rapid and insane pace. There's no way around it. Getting started on a long road to be a successful freelancer is tough and extremely time consuming. However, you're going to get better and learn each day as well. If you can push through the difficult times, your long term growth will be more than you can even imagine right now. You know something else that should be a top priority? Backing up your important files, memorable photos, and basically anything that's valuable to you stored on your computer's hard drive. If you're not backing up your files, then you could lose everything. Our sponsor, Backblaze, has a great solution to keep your digital files backed up. Backblaze is a cloud storage solution that's simple to use and affordable as well. Starting at just $6 a month, you have unlimited online backups allowing you to fully back up everything that's important to you. They've recovered over 50 billion files and have great recovery options. You can download your files anywhere in the world or you can pay to have a hard drive mailed to you via FedEx overnight shipping containing your backups. After recovering your files from the hard drive, you can return it within 30 days for a refund. Other than personal backup solutions, they also have business and B2 cloud storage solutions as well. You can get started today with a fully featured 15 day free trial by visiting the link in the description of the video or by going to backblaze.com forward slash Josh Burns Tech. Thank you so much Backblaze for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. Go give it a try and never lose a file again. Also, if you could take a quick second and hit the like button on this video, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Having a complete profile that's attractive to clients is the very first thing that you need to get your first job on Upwork. Your profile is one of the most essential factors for your success on Upwork. It's basically your online resume that will either set you apart from the competition or hold you back. Did you know that nearly one third of jobs on Upwork are invite only, which means that many clients search for freelancers with the skills that they need and then they invite them to bid on their job. I personally get invited to jobs every single week. Your goal should be to get invited to as many jobs as possible. It allows you to actually focus on your work rather than spending tons of time searching for jobs on Upwork. I rarely search for jobs on Upwork because of the long-term work that I have combined with the job invites that I get. Right now, I have over 200 Upwork connects. Completing and optimizing your profile will also help you achieve rising talent status or top rated status. Both will help you stand out, offer reduced fees on featured jobs along with other benefits as well. So now let's take a look at my Upwork profile and I'll show you exactly how I attract and hook clients. If you're not familiar with what I'm showing you right now, it's a page under the Find Work tab called My Stats, which gives you a lot of great information. As you can see here, my profile was discovered 216 times last week, and you can actually follow along with this graph to see how many times it was viewed. You definitely need to check this tab as you're working on your profile because it shows your profile completeness. 100% profile completion is also a requirement for top rated status on Upwork so you can understand why it's critical to have a complete profile. So you've probably noticed that Upwork is making some major changes to profiles. They've completely redesigned the profile layout 
and there's a lot of new badges. Each of the different badges has different requirements as you can see. You can also scroll down and look at the benefits as well as the requirements. For example, to earn the top rated plus badge, you need to achieve top rated status, you need to earn $10,000 or more in the last 12 months, and you need positive feedback on one large contract. I'll go ahead and link this page in the description of the video in case you want to go through it, look at the requirements, and look at the benefits. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at my profile, and I'm going to go ahead and give you tips on how to set yours up. Starting at the top, you need a high resolution photo. A lot of new freelancers don't understand how important your profile photo is. Your profile photo is one of the main things that gets a client to click on you as they're scrolling through tons of job proposals. The most important things that get a client to click on your job proposal is your profile photo, your title, and the first one to two sentences of your cover letter. However, out of all of those, your profile photo is usually the first thing noticed. It needs to be high resolution and clear. You need to be smiling and you need to have a decent background. The profile photo that I'm using is one that was professionally done. This is from when I was on Upwork's front page of their website and featured all over the place in their marketing campaigns. If you don't have a good headshot of yourself, you have a couple options. So what I recommend doing is finding a photographer to take a headshot photo of you. If a client is going through job proposals, they see one photo of someone that looks friendly, they're smiling, they're engaging, then they see another one of someone with just a blank stare on their face. Who are they going to click on? They're going to click on the person that's smiling, who looks friendly, and looks like they would be a great person to work with. Next, you have the profile title. So you can see mine is SQL Server DBA and Developer Data Engineer. Upwork actually has specialized profiles now, I'm sure you've heard of those. So you can understand that I need to split mine out. So I need to create a couple of customized profiles. I would have one for SQL Server DBA and SQL Developer, and then I would have another profile for Data Engineer. But your titles need to align with the work that you're trying to get. So when a client comes to Upwork and they're searching for a freelancer with a specific skill set, you want to come up in the results. So how do you do that? Number one, your title needs to have the keywords in it. My goal is that when a client searches for SQL Server DBA, that my profile appears. SQL Server DBA is my main skill set and it's the main keyword that I use in my profile. Scrolling through my profile, you will find SQL Server DBA a lot. You know what, let's go ahead and do a control find. So let's see how many times this is used. And now we can scroll down. SQL Server DBA, SQL Server DBA, SQL Server DBA, SQL Server DBA. And that's only on the first page of my reviews. If you went through all my reviews, SQL Server DBA shows up a lot. Here it is in my portfolio, and here it is in my employment history as well. So your title needs to start out with the main keyword that you want to get jobs for. Okay, here we are on the Find Work tab. I changed the drop down to Freelancers and Agencies, and now I'm going to search for SQL Server DBA. And as you can see, my profile just appeared first. For SQL Server DBA, I always show up on the first page, usually within the first few freelancers. Obviously, there's tons of factors that play into your ranking, such as my earnings, my job success score, how many jobs I've completed related to SQL Server DBA, but the title is a huge aspect of it. So if we scroll down, you can see that a lot of these other freelancers, theirs don't start off with SQL Server DBA. So make sure that your title is specific to the type of jobs that you're trying to get. So right now, my profile rate is at $125 an hour because I know that I provide that level of value. My first few jobs on Upwork were actually between $25 and $35 an hour. I started out bidding in the entry level and intermediate skill set because I wanted to gain some experience as a freelancer. I started getting a ton of 5 star reviews and I gradually increased my rate as my value increased. Next up, something that's gaining a ton of importance is the profile video. On the old layout, there used to just be a button that said play video. Now it's been redesigned for the client to meet you. So in my case, I have a YouTube channel, so I just linked one of my recent SQL Server videos. And when a client comes to my page, they can click on the play button. Having a video gives the client a chance to see you, to hear you talk, and to get to know you more before they even think about interviewing you. All you need to do is record a brief video of yourself talking about your skills, the services you offer, and you know, just be friendly. It doesn't need to be a long video. Keep it five minutes or less. Focus on the value that you provide to clients, smile often in the video, and be friendly. I would recommend filming your video somewhere with good lighting and a good background. 
If you want an example, just go back and watch the first of this YouTube video. Look at the lighting that I have. Look at my background. Look how I have everything like that set up. But again, with the video being this close to the top on Upwork profiles, they're definitely putting a lot of focus into it, so you need to as well. Having a good intro video is going to help your chances in getting your first job on Upwork tremendously. And next up, we have the profile overview. So if we go back and we look at our search for SQL Server DBA, here's something that's very important. So what do you see here? You can see that the first couple sentences in my overview show up in the search results. Just like the first couple sentences of your cover letters are very important, the first couple sentences of your overview are equally as important. Think for ways to make these first couple sentences pop and be attractive to clients. So take a look at how I started out. Obviously, your profile overview is going to be very different from mine. You know, I recommend that you take a look at mine to get ideas for your own, but make it unique. Mine's definitely evolved over time, but you can see right now how I start out saying that I'm the highest rated and highest earning SQL Server freelancer on Upwork. That's something that I've earned. I didn't have that in my overview when I first started. But think of ways to make your first couple sentences more appealing than another freelancer. Definitely try to keep your profile overview brief and make it client-centric. Make it focused on the client, how you're going to help them, how you're going to be beneficial to them, how you're going to provide value to their business. So you can see next, I highlight some of the major companies that I've worked with. So what does this do? This helps to build my credibility with the client. They can see that some major companies have trusted me, so it builds my credibility and trust with the client. And then I dive briefly into my experience in SQL Server Database Administration, just really highlighting what I can offer to them. This is another section that I added in to be unique. These are not things that you should copy and paste into your profile. These are specific soft skill things about myself and what I bring to the table for clients. Over-delivering, responsiveness, resilience, kindness, those are all internal things and things that I try to provide to clients. You're not going to be setting yourself up for success if you're copying another freelancer's overview. You need to make it specific to yourself, specific to your skill set, and what you provide to clients. When you look at my overview, the key points that I want you to take away from it is a layout and then most importantly, how I'm client-centric. Think of ways to make your overview focused on the client and what they would want to read. Next up, we have your availability. You definitely need to have your availability listed here. As you can see, mine is as needed open to offers. Make your availability accurate to how much work you can take on. Education also used to be buried at the bottom of profiles. Now you can see that it's close to the top. If you don't have a college degree, don't feel discouraged. I have mine listed here, but it's 2020 and not everyone needs a college degree to be successful. However, in most industries, you probably need some type of formal training, a certification, something like that. So whatever education that you can add, whatever certifications, make sure those are on your profile. And as you can see right here in my overview, the next section is one of the most important parts of my profile and it always has been. From the day I started on Upwork, I focused on getting 5 star reviews, providing the most value possible that I could to clients, and over delivering. As a result, what do you see when you look through my reviews? Almost every single one of my reviews has 5 stars and has great feedback. Having reviews like this is going to help you get jobs more than basically anything else will. It's going to help you get jobs like this one and get reviews like these as well. The client review section is the most important part of my entire profile. I put the most work into it, it means the most to me, and I value it the most. Before the internet and social media was huge, most companies did well by word of mouth. What do people say about you? You want the word of mouth in your Upwork reviews to be exceptional. Just like you wouldn't buy a product on Amazon with horrible reviews, a client isn't going to work with you if you have bad reviews. How do you get reviews like this? You over deliver and you focus on being client centric and providing as much value possible as you can to the client. Next up we have the portfolio section which is way smaller now on this new layout so I'm going to zoom in on it. The portfolio section is still very important. Even though on this new layout it kind of looks less important than it used to be, it's still a way for you to showcase your work. You can see on mine I have listed where I was featured as one of the top freelancers on Upwork and I was in a lot of their marketing campaigns. I have my YouTube channel linked, all my success with it, and my SQL Server videos. 
And I also have a few examples of my SQL Server skill set. Whatever previous projects that you've done, big time accolades, throw those in here. Any previous projects you've completed that showcase your skill set, throw those on here. Especially when you're a new freelancer and you don't have any reviews or feedback yet, clients are going to want to see examples of your work. If you're really new to your skill set and you don't really have any examples yet, then you're probably going to need to find example projects online using something like GitHub or something similar. Go find a project that you can do yourself related to your skill set, complete it, and then create a portfolio item for it. Next up, we have the skills section. Your skills, again, need to be related to the type of jobs that you're trying to get. Take a look at mine. Microsoft SQL Server Programming, Microsoft SQL Server Administration, Database Administration, Database, SQL Server, SQL. You can see that every one of my skills tie in to my title and the skills that I provide to clients. Hopefully you're starting to realize how all these things combine together on your profile factor into how you're ranked and how you're recommended to clients. My profile is immensely optimized for SQL Server and Database Administration. Whatever your skill set is, make your profile optimized for it. In the next section, you can create pre-packaged projects. I haven't really done anything with this. These aren't accurate. I didn't set these up. They were all default, so I'm not going to cover these. Next, we have employment history. If you have employment history related to your skill set, you need to highlight it here. And remember keywords. Use your main skill set as the keywords for your previous experience if you have it for that skill. Take a look at mine. Database Administrator. SQL Server DBA. SQL Server DBA. You can see how my main skill set is in a lot of my employment history as well. And then last, you have other experiences. Now this is on the bottom of your profile, so it doesn't have a lot of importance. So what I used it for was to highlight some of the certifications that I have. If you have any certifications or any type of training that you've done and you want to throw it in here, this is a good place to do it. I've put a lot of work into my Upwork profile and it's been an ongoing process over the years. These are tips that I've acquired over the years and I'm giving them to you to help you get your first job on Upwork and be a successful high earning freelancer. Updating my profile is something that I do periodically. If I come up with a new idea, I have new accolades to add to it or if I just want to try something different. And since recording the first part of this video when we went over my profile, I actually updated something in my overview which I want to show you. So if we scroll down to the bottom of my overview. So I removed the very last paragraph that used to be in my overview. Honestly, that section had been in my overview basically since I first started on Upwork. I wanted to update the last part of my overview to make it more attractive to clients. So I took one of my reviews and I placed it in my overview. And this is what I added. The client review below, which you can find in my review section and numerous others like it, describes the quality of work and value that you can expect from working with me. I grabbed one of my reviews and I placed it at the end of my overview. And this is a really great review that I got from a high paying contract. I placed this in my overview to give the client more confidence in me and my abilities to help them achieve whatever their task is, whatever their job is, and provide immense value to them. So if you're a brand new freelancer on Upwork, something you could do is get a review from a client, a previous job you've had, something that relates to your skill set, get someone to give you a review, you know, a previous employers, you know, someone along those lines. Get a review from someone like that and then you can place that in your overview and just list the name of the client or your previous employer, list the name of them right beside of it. I personally didn't list the name of the person leaving the review because it's in my review section and the client can easily find it. So let me show you it real quick. It's a recent review. And here you go. Database administrator needed to help maintain and migrate databases. Here's the review, which you just saw in my overview. And as you can see, it was a high paying contract. The key takeaway here is to let you know that I'm always looking for ways to improve my profile. I want you to constantly think of ways that you can improve it. If you create your profile and never come back to improve it, you're going to be stagnant. Just like your skill set, you always need to be improving it, building upon it, and finding new ways to service clients. Your profile needs to be viewed in the same regard. You need to be thinking of ways to improve it, new ways to make it attractive to clients, which is going to earn you more money. When clients post a job on Upwork, they will be really active for the first few hours. If you can submit your proposal within the first few hours of it being posted, your chances to be interviewed skyrocket. This is immensely critical when you're trying to get your first job on Upwork.
you don't have the reviews and the jobs completed on your profile like a lot of other freelancers do. However, if you submit your job proposal before those freelancers, then you can get noticed and interviewed quick if you meet the client's requirements. A great way that you can throw your Upwork Connects down the drain is to submit a job proposal on a job that's been open for days or a week with no recent activity from the client. As a new freelancer on Upwork, you need to do everything in your power to find competitive advantages over other freelancers. Applying fast is one of the best ways that you can separate yourself and give yourself a competitive advantage. I mention this in a lot of my videos, but I actually hired my YouTube video editor, Alex, on Upwork. He's been editing my videos for about two years now. He's very talented and just overall a great person to work with. <sighs> So when I created the job on Upwork, I quickly shortlisted several freelancers who submitted their job proposals within those first few hours. A lot of you probably don't know this, but Upwork clients actually have a button that they can click and that will shortlist freelancers. This is a great feature for Upwork clients because it allows them to only focus on those freelancers who they're considering. I know personally that when you have a job created and it gets over 20 proposals submitted, it's really hard to navigate through the list. Even more importantly to remember, Clients come to Upwork for the convenience, the simplicity, and the quickness of finding freelancers to fulfill their business needs. You see, most clients want to find a freelancer quick and get started. It's one of the main benefits to use freelancers because the hiring process is so much quicker and easier as well. Make sure that you have the Upwork app installed on your phone so that you can check for new jobs frequently and have it ordered by newest jobs first. If you get invited to a job and it's a good fit for you and your skills, then again, apply fast. If a client invites you to a job, then you're likely one of the select few. The client will often wanna work with the first freelancer who they communicate with that can fulfill the job requirements and also communicate their value. Don't wait around for another freelancer to get that first discussion. Jump on that invite quick. Okay, now let's jump back over to Upwork. I'm gonna show you how to find the best jobs for you and apply fast by using advanced search. So how do you find the right jobs and apply fast? So how I got to this screen was I went to find work and then I clicked on a category that I have saved, which is database administration. There's currently 276 jobs available for the category of database administration globally. Instead of trying to just go through 276 of these, we're gonna throw some filters on. Now I'm gonna click filters. For job type, I would pretty much leave it open to anything unless you only wanna work on hourly or fixed price jobs. When you're starting out as a new freelancer and trying to get your first jobs, I would leave it as any job type. Experience level, now this is something that comes down to your ability to perform your skill. For my specific skill, which is database administration, SQL Server database administration to be specific, I have over eight years of experience working as a SQL Server DBA. I've been exposed to so many different types of projects and jobs on Upwork. I've put so much time into my skill set and I'm really comfortable working on projects for SQL Server. And that's something that I always try to drill home in you. Your skill set is the most important prerequisite to your freelance career. Without your skill set, you're never going to make any money on Upwork. If your skill set isn't where it needs to be today, then you have to start putting in the time. When I first started learning SQL Server, I made sure that I dedicated a certain amount of hours to learning it every day. I didn't just go through one course, wait a week, and then maybe pick up another one. I made sure I put X amount of hours into developing my skill set every single day. So whatever your experience level is for your skill set, you need to select it here, and you can select more than one. When I first started out freelancing, for example, I was trying to just build my confidence as a freelancer, so I started out by selecting entry level and intermediate. For me personally, when I first started out, I wanted to work on jobs that I knew I could deliver 5 star ratings on. So my first jobs were in the entry level and intermediate range. Over time, as I completed jobs, I got 5 star reviews and great feedback, I increased my rate, and I increased the experience level of jobs that I was looking for. Today, every single job that I do is expert level. You're going to make way more money at expert level, but it takes time to get there. Now, if you're someone that's been in a full-time job for years and you have tons of experience in your skill set, this doesn't apply to you. For those individuals, you could start out in the expert experience level because you have the expert level ability. So again, I'm making this specific to me, so I'm going to select expert. I would recommend leaving client history open. The reason I recommend that is because some of my largest contracts have come from new clients to Upwork. I've had some very large, really high paying contracts that are long term 
with clients that just came to Upwork. Because of that, I'm going to leave any client history. For client info, you can make sure that they're already payment verified. Again, I don't select this personally because a lot of new clients to Upwork will create their account and they may not set up the payment right away. So if you select this, you can end up filtering out some clients that just haven't had the time to set up their payment method. So I personally don't check this because I don't want to filter out any of those clients. This is one of the best ways that you can avoid wasting your connects. Number of proposals. So as I mentioned earlier, it's really important to get your proposal submitted fast. When a fairly new Upwork job has been created and there's a low level of proposal submitted, you have a very great chance to stand out and get noticed. Through my years of experience on Upwork and trying so many things out, I find that it's best to submit a job proposal when there's only been about 5 to 10 submitted. This means that there's a very short list that the client is looking through. Once a job gets in the 15 to 20 or even 20 to 50 range, there's so many job proposals submitted the client likely isn't going through all those, they just don't have the time to. And let me just go ahead and show you exactly what it looks like. Okay, so now I'm logged in to my Upwork client account. Again, as I mentioned previously, this is my video editor Alex who I hired through Upwork. So what we're going to do is take a look at the original job proposals. As you can see, my job had 19 proposals submitted. Again, as I mentioned earlier, shortlisted. This is why I told you that shortlisting is so important. You want to be shortlisted. Your best way to get shortlisted is to get your proposal submitted fast. As soon as a client notices you and they believe that you can complete their project successfully, they're going to shortlist you. So here's exactly what proposals look like whenever you submit them to clients. These proposals are linked at the top because Upwork recommended them as best matches for me. I can highlight over best match and you can see that it says that this freelancer has been selected based on their work history and fit with my job. And something else I want to mention, remember earlier when we went through my profile, remember how much importance that I put on the profile photo. Take a look at these photos. Which of these am I most likely to click on? In the first photo, the freelancer is smiling, it has good lighting, the only thing that I would recommend changing is this background. So he's obviously outside or something. But what I would recommend doing is having a solid background. This background is kind of distracting and it takes the focus away from him. Take a look at the next profile photo. There's obviously two people in this photo. The distance is kind of bad as well. It's just something I wouldn't recommend. And here's an example of a good photo. This photo has great lighting. It's focused on him, on his face. He's smiling. He looks engaging. This is overall a great photo and it was the first one that really caught my attention when I scrolled through these. Again, if you have the ability to get a professional headshot photo taken of yourself, definitely do it. They're going to have the lighting, they're going to have the background, they're going to have everything that you need to make it a great photo. So what I wanted to mention in regards to submitting your proposal fast is this. Look how many proposals there are. I even have to click on load more. So this is with 19 proposals submitted. So it actually shows 10 proposals on the first page which means that there's nine proposals that the client doesn't even see unless they click this load more button. Your chances of being noticed from someone that has to click load more to even see your proposal are very, very, very slim. If you submit a proposal on a job that's in the 15 to 20 range or 20 to 50, and then you end up on the load more side. So an example of what you just did by doing that is you took your Upward Connects, you opened your window while driving down the highway, you toss them out and then they got literally obliterated by tons and tons of cars running over them, crushing them. This is where you want to end up and the best way to end up here is by getting your proposal submitted fast. You want to be on the shortlisted side. Once I had these freelancers shortlisted, I never checked all proposals again. I never went back to it. I made my decision based off the freelancers that I shortlisted here. And again, the freelancer that I chose is, in my opinion, the best video editor on YouTube. He's great. Alex. So I hope you realize that when you submit a job proposal for a job that has more than 10 proposals, your chances of being noticed are very, very small. I'm going to leave less than 5 checked and 5 to 10 checked. I don't really focus on any specific budgets. I pretty much leave the budget open. And then hours per week, I leave this open as well to anything. Most clients just throw this in here, but they really don't know how much time it's really going to take. And something else that I recommend, once you have a really good filter set like this, instead of having to come back and put all these in every time, you can actually click on save search right here. I'm going to call this one database administration with filters. 
and then I'm going to click save. And now I can go back and reference that one anytime. And then for project length, you can really put whatever you want in here. I'll leave it as any project length. There's not any specific length that I'm looking for, so I just leave this as any. And now when I start going through these jobs, these are really filtered down and specific to what I'm looking for. Also something that I forgot to mention, I always have my sort on newest. There's other options here, but again, my goal is to apply fast. I want to see the newest jobs that were submitted. This one is at the very top because it was marked as an interesting job. But again, posted three hours ago, posted four hours ago, and then what I would do is start going through the job descriptions, making sure that it's something that I can do, something that fits my skill set. And if it's something that I'm interested in, I'll click on the job and then go through the process of submitting a job proposal after checking some other criteria as well. There's tons and tons of jobs that get uploaded to Upwork all the time. So for instance, if you come to Upwork right now and you go through and look at these jobs like I am, none of these are really standing out as jobs that I want to spend my connects on. Does that discourage me? Not at all. I could literally come back here and refresh hours from now and there will be new jobs. So don't get discouraged if you go look for jobs and you don't find anything right away that you want to bid on. There's jobs uploaded to Upwork every single hour. You have to frequently check the new jobs. After you have your search saved, all you have to do is periodically come in and refresh it. If you're not searching for new jobs, you're not going to get anything. Keep in mind that there's someone else in the world with a similar skill set as you, and they're probably searching for jobs more often than you are. If you want to be able to get jobs and compete with those freelancers, you have to check for new jobs frequently. After you find a job that has a great title that matches up with your skill set and the description is something that you feel comfortable doing, whenever you click on the job, before you hit submit a proposal, there's other things that you need to look at. Number one, this job is going to cost two connects. So I have 210 connects right now, so that's not a problem for me. Depending on how many connects that you have available, you need to take a close look at the job to determine if it's worth using your connects on. What I would personally recommend doing is scrolling down and taking a look at the reviews of the client. If it's a new client, this isn't going to be here. However, this is a client that has one review from a freelancer. Why is that important? It's important because you want to see what the freelancer said about the client. As a freelancer, I can tell you that there's clients out there that aren't worth your time. When you're building your freelance profile and really working on setting yourself up for success, you don't want to work with bad clients. Not knowing what type of review you're going to get from the client is going to be really stressful. You need really great reviews starting out. The more great reviews you get, the more it's just going to keep building with the steamroll effect. You're going to get noticed more, you're going to get more jobs, you're going to make more money. So you can see they have a 5 star review and we'll go take a look and see what the freelancer said. As you can see, this is a really great review. I would not hesitate to work for him again. So this gives me confidence that this client is going to be a good one to work with. So would I go ahead and click submit a proposal now? Not yet. What else should I look at? This section right here is what you want to look at. Activity on this job. There's been 5 to 10 proposals submitted. Again, that's in a range of a filter we set. This doesn't have a filter. Last viewed by client. Now obviously this is a newer job, so it's going to be viewed pretty recently. It was last viewed by the client 3 hours ago. So what happens when you find a job that fits your skill set, but it's been open for days or maybe a week? You click on the job and you're so excited to submit a job proposal because it aligns with your skill set so well. It's something that you're really confident in doing. Because of your emotion, you go ahead and click submit proposal because you're ready to get it submitted. And what happened is you just made a really huge mistake. You completely forgot about checking the activity on the job. You didn't check last viewed by client. Now if this job had been open for a week or maybe even longer, there's a good chance that this value could be days. And let me give you an example of that right now. Let's take a look at one of the jobs that's been open the longest. All right, here we go. This job has been open for a month. And if we scroll down and take a look at activity on the job, the client hasn't opened this job in one month. The client hasn't reviewed or interacted with any of the applicants for this job in a month. So what you did is you just submitted a job proposal on a job that the client isn't even looking at. This is one of the most common ways that I see freelancers wasting their connects. You have to look at activity on this job. If you don't look at this section, you're literally just wasting your connects. After you find the best jobs that fit your skill set and are worthy of using your precious Upwork connects on, 
Next, you need to write job winning cover letters. You've optimized your profile. You have an eye catching profile photo and now you're ready to hook the client with your cover letter. If you're someone who copies the same cover letter that you put mediocre effort into and then you paste that into all your job proposals, please stop doing that today. You're literally wasting so many connects. I do have a template, but I only use it for repetitive things that are in all of my cover letters, which I'm going to show you shortly. Coincidentally, I also have a full video on my channel that covers the entire process that I use when I write cover letters. However, I'm going to quickly cover it here as well for anyone who hasn't watched that video. And if you want a more in-depth walkthrough, then go back and watch that video when you finish this one. I keep all of my Upwork and Freelance videos in a playlist at the top of my YouTube channel so that you can easily find and watch them. So let's go ahead and jump back over to Upwork again. I'm going to show you exactly how I write cover letters and give you a real life example. Okay, so now I'm going to show you something completely for free on YouTube, which I could take and throw in a course like so many people have done and then charge you for it. But instead of doing that, all I ask is to take one second and hit the like button on this video. I really appreciate it so much and it really helps my channel. I'm going to show you exactly how I write cover letters that win jobs. So I looked through a bunch of these jobs. There's nothing right now on Upwork that I want to bid on that I would really want to spend my connects on. This client is specifically looking for a database architect and administrator. This is a job that fits my skill set. I'm comfortable doing it. I know I have experience with it. So I'm going to go ahead and submit a proposal. And you may be thinking that my hourly rate is higher than this. Why would I submit a proposal for it? I've had clients that had the same type of range and then they ended up hiring me for over $100 an hour. This doesn't discourage me. And now I'm going to start constructing my cover letter. And one other thing that I want to mention. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I post Upwork tips to them almost daily. I also link a lot of great useful information like this template I'm getting ready to show you for cover letters. The links are down in the description of this video for you. All of my cover letters are broken down into sections which I make specific to the job I'm bidding on and the client. The first section, grab attention and hook the client fast. What would make you click on the proposal? Be creative and think in the client's perspective. If you don't already know this, the first one to two sentences of your cover letter is what the client is going to see first when they're scrolling through job proposals. So here we are back on my client account and I want to show you this. The first one to two sentences of Alex's cover letter is one of the main reasons why I hired him. As you can see, it's the first one to two sentences that appears to the client before they click on your proposal. What did Alex do? He was creative. Alex was creative and he told me exactly what I wanted to hear. This section right here is something that caused me to take action. And this is the really great part right here. Ideas for your channel. And then he went in to giving me ideas for my channel. So why did this jump out at me and why was it creative? Well, let's take a look at the other proposals. And let's scroll down and look at a few of these. A bunch of these freelancers, and a lot of people do this, they're telling me their name at the very first part of the proposal, which I can already see right here. There's no reason to throw your name at the first year cover letter when they can already see it. Most of these proposals just start talking directly about their experience. That's why it's important to be creative and think of ways to stand out. The first part of his cover letter was very great. Alex really took advantage by making his first two sentences stand out. So again, grab attention and hook the client fast. Next, you need to give a specific example of your work that relates directly to the client's job. The client needs to know that you can deliver on their job and their project. The best way to build that confidence is to give them a specific example of something that you've already done. Next, I focus on building credibility by providing the client with hard evidence of my skills and my experience. Then tell the client what separates you. Why are you unique? Sink the hook in further. Give the client a reason why hiring you, why working with you is the best decision for them, which will provide the most value. Call to action. Cause the client to take action. And then I end with a professional closing. How can you stand out? One way is to find the client's name, and this is possible. The job I'm actually submitting a proposal for doesn't have any reviews with a name in it, so I'm going to open this job right here so I can show you. So before you hit submit a proposal, what you can do is scroll down and look at the client reviews. You can see that the freelancer left a review and they used the name of the client. So if I was submitting a job proposal for that job, I would come to the first section here under grab attention to hook the client fast, and I would lead off with something like this. 
As simple as that was, it made my proposal way more personalized. I will likely be one of the few proposals actually referencing the client's name. And then I would use something to grab the client's attention. And I try to customize this and try different ways. Instead of having this in a template and pasting it into every single one of my job proposals, I really play around with different ideas to see which ones perform best. So for this one, I'm going to start off and say, your job post grabbed my attention instantly. This tells them that something that they placed in their job description really grabbed my attention. It's something that I do a lot. Now I'm going to remove this header because I'm finished with this section. Okay, next up, example of work. This is where you give the client confidence that you can deliver successfully. And here's what I use for this proposal. I've completed numerous SQL Server database administration jobs on Upwork, all with five-star reviews and great feedback as well. Two specific examples that relate directly to your job post are attached to this proposal for you. So I went to my profile and I took screenshots of two reviews that relate directly to the client's project and their long-term contracts that I made a lot of money on. I'm going to go ahead and upload those now. So we have review one and review two. And now to show you what both of these look like, let me go ahead and open them. So here's review number one, Microsoft SQL Server DBA. Again, database administration relating directly to their project. This was a really large contract that I worked on, $55,000 earned. But most importantly, forget the earnings. This is what's important. The overall rating was five stars. They gave me five stars on every single thing. Skills, availability, communication, quality, deadlines, cooperation. And the feedback is just as great. This is something that is going to give the client very, very, very high confidence in me. Client confidence and trust is monumental. And then we can take a look at review two. Again, large contract. It doesn't have to be a large contract though. If you haven't had large contracts yet, just use something that has a really good review. You don't even have to have the earnings on it. I left the earnings on mine because it shows that I was able to retain this client for a long time. It also shows that the client invested a lot of money in me and they're happy with the value that I provided. It will give this client confidence that the return on investment for hiring me is going to be good for them. But the review is the most important factor. Five stars on everything with great feedback. So what if you're brand new to Upwork? You don't have any client reviews yet that you can use this way. You can easily reach out to someone, some employer that you've worked for, a colleague that you've worked with, someone that can give you a professional review. If you want to make it professional and stand out, get them to write you a formal review in a Word document which you can save as a PDF, and then have them sign the document as well. This is literally the same thing that you would do if you were getting references for a resume. I did this when I graduated from college. When I built my resume, I also got references. I reached out to professors I had in college, I reached out to my former employers, and what I did is I had some of them write reviews, they signed it, they were all professional, and I included those with my resume when I was applying for jobs. You can literally do the same thing here. So I'm finished with this section, so I'm going to go ahead and delete the header as well. Next I focus on building my credibility. I achieve this by discussing my experience letting them know that I have over eight years of experience directly related to their job. Next, I list a couple of really quick accolades. I discuss how I'm one of the top SQL Server freelancers on Upwork with over 7,000 hours worked, over $580,000 earned, you get the point. And then I discuss how I've been featured in tons of Upwork marketing campaigns, including the front page of the website. And I'm gonna add those attachments as well. So I include these two attachments and I'll show you what they are really quick. The first one is when I was featured on the front page of the website. Here's a screenshot from that. And next is when I was used as the cover photo for their Facebook page. So think creatively and think of any accolades or achievements that would help build the client's confidence and trust in you. So I'm going to remove the header for this section. So what separates me and makes me unique among other freelancers? Please review my profile where you will find numerous five-star reviews and raving feedback as well. I tell the client to review my profile where they will find numerous five-star reviews and raving feedback. I then mention my YouTube channel. This is something that makes me unique and makes me stand out among other freelancers. I have a YouTube channel with over 25,000 subscribers and 1.7 million views. As all of you know, on my channel I provide freelancing, personal finance, and tech review content. 
I also have a full playlist dedicated to SQL Server content. My SQL Server videos demonstrate my skills and my abilities within SQL Server. This is a very unique way that I build client trust and confidence. The client can see specific examples of my work and my knowledge in SQL Server. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this header. Next, it's time to sync the hook in further. Here's a way that I would do this. If you choose me, you can be assured that you're getting top-notch expertise in SQL Server as well as someone who will complete your jobs correctly the first time. I'm giving them confidence in me that they won't have to hire someone else to go in and fix all my mistakes. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this header. Okay, so let's take a look at the call to action, and this is one of the most important parts of my cover letters. This is definitely a section that I modify a lot and try a lot of different variations of. However, this is a great one here. So let's see how I structured this one. The call to action that I'm using is getting them to schedule an intro call with me, which I can use as an interview. This is not only an opportunity for the client to interview me, but it's an opportunity for me to interview the client. The client's job post and description is not enough to get me to accept it. I need to speak to the client. I need to make sure they're going to be a good person to work for. I need to make sure we're going to have a good working relationship. I need to make sure that they I need to make sure that they didn't leave something out of the job description that I'm not comfortable doing. Overall, I need to make sure that this specific job is a great fit for me and I can deliver five star high quality work on. If it doesn't meet that criteria, I don't accept it. I've had a ton of success on Upwork. My profile is flooded with five star reviews. A lot of that has to do with me being very selective. I make sure that I set myself up for success. So then I go on to tell them that we can discuss the project in more detail and we can ensure that my skill set will be a great fit. I give them two specific times that I can be available this week. And then I tell the client that if neither of those times work for them to just let me know when they will be available and I will alter my schedule around for it. This builds a little extra confidence and trust in me because the client can see that I'm willing to alter my schedule. I'm willing to make it work for them. And this is something I do to build a little extra confidence and trust in me. I make sure that the client knows they're important to me. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this section off. And there's no reason to leave the J uppercase. That was just a mistake on my part. And last, we have professional closing. And this is one that I would use. And I'll go ahead and delete the header off this one. And that's how I write cover letters. And now what I do is I go through it one more time. I make sure there's not any typos and I make sure I didn't leave anything out. So now I'm just going to scroll down through the cover letter and double check everything. And here's a great example of something that I need to change. So I need to change freelancing to freelance, where I provide freelance, personal finance, and tech review content. Okay, that sounds way better. And there we go. I've constructed a great cover letter and I'm ready to submit it. Your success on Upwork is dependent on your ability to service clients' needs and provide value to them. You need to stop focusing on yourself and put yourself in the perspective of the client. To get five-star reviews with the feedback that I have on my profile, you have to constantly think about the client. What would you expect if you were the client? Are you communicating effectively and keeping them updated? Are you making an effort to over-deliver? Are you providing immense value? These are all things that I think about when I'm working with a client or trying to get a job, and you need to as well. So what's the best way to become a client-focused freelancer? I would recommend thinking of something that you need help with. It could be a very simple task. Then go to Upwork, create a client account, and post your job. Then hire a freelancer to complete your task. This will be an eye-opening experience for you and put yourself directly in the perspective of the client. The better that you can fulfill clients' needs and over-deliver, the more money that you're going to make on Upwork. A lot of freelancers ask me how I get really great reviews and feedback on my profile. It's a combination of over-delivering and always putting myself in the client's perspective. I always strive to go above and beyond their expectations of me. For example, I recently worked with a client to resolve an issue that they were experiencing. After I resolved the issue, I sent them a best practice document that they could go back and reference. This is a document that I already created in the past, so all I had to do is just go through it and update a few things. Did they ask for this? No. But I knew it was something additional that I could add which would be of high value. This led to an amazing 5-star review on my profile. 
And you can even see they reference a document which I sent over. The freelance content on my channel is unique because I actually talk about what it takes to be a successful freelancer. You could be one of the most talented people with a high paying skill set. However, if you lack motivation, consistency, resilience, and work ethic, then you're going to be limited. There's so many people who become successful, but then they plateau, become stagnant, and just lose their motivation. A large portion of my success on Upwork is due to the fact that I love what I do. Freelancing, YouTube, and growing my business, all of those feel like a hobby to me rather than work. This is a major reason why I'm able to pour the hours that I do into freelancing and YouTube. Now personally, as an actor, I started enjoying my work living, and man. literally being more happy when I stopped trying to make the daily labor a means to a certain end. For example, uh, I need this film to be a box office success. You know, I need my performance to be acknowledged. I need the respect of my peers. All those are reasonable aspirations, but the truth is, as soon as the work, the daily making of the movie, the doing of the deed became the reward in itself for me, I got more box office, more accolades and respect than I ever had before. You know, if anybody watching right now, if there's anything they take away, it's like, look, like you're gonna only be so pretty, you're only gonna be so smart, like, you, like th there's, there's things that are gonna be natural and then there's things that you can actually control I do believe, and I don't know if I'm right or wrong, I don't, but I do believe that work ethic is a taught behavior. It's something you do have more control over. Of course, there's days where I'm extremely tired or I'm just lacking motivation. However, those days are usually due to me not getting enough sleep or working out enough. I truly love freelancing on Upwork and creating YouTube content that helps others. And that allows me to put in the work and put in the grind that's required to get where I wanna be. How did I become successful on Upwork and earn almost $600,000 in four years? I put so much time into developing my skill set and making it a point to be the hardest worker on the platform. Your work ethic is always the one variable that you can control. You may not be the smartest person, you may not be the most naturally talented, but you can always outwork the competition. I've always had the mentality that I will never let someone outwork me. The feeling of someone working harder than me, it eats away at me. I think about it constantly. Then, in turn, it causes me to work harder and grind longer. How much time do you spend staring at your phone each day? Every one of those seconds count. As each second passes, you're setting yourself back. Those seconds could be put into developing your skill set, becoming a better freelancer, or learning from others who are in positions that you want to be in. Every second counts. You have to watch. You have to watch every single second. because those seconds, they turn into minutes. And minutes turn into hours, and hours turn into days, and days turn into years. And so, that second, that second that just went by, that counted. When I need a little extra motivation, I watch videos like the clip I just showed you from Mulligan Brothers. I turn on their videos and listen to them during the day as I'm working. It's something that just works for me. Listening to their videos helps me set my mindset for the day and work harder. My work schedule has changed a lot in the last year since I'm working from home full time now. I typically work from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Then I eat dinner and spend time with my fiance, who's also working from home right now due to COVID. Then I usually work again from around 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. On weekends, I get done what I need to. I have a lot of flexibility to spend a lot of time with my fiance on the weekends because of how hard I work during the week. Of course, I definitely still work on the weekend because I'm a freelancer and because I make YouTube content. The majority of my work gets completed during the week because of the focused effort that I put in. However, all my work feels like a hobby to me, so I'm never tracking hours. I count what I got done and the progress that I made. I personally recommend using something like Trello. I use it to set my top priorities for the day and then mark them as complete as I finish them. I love looking at my long list of done items because I know that I put the work in that I needed to. Previously, I was using OneNote to keep track of my top priorities, which was really difficult to manage. Trello also has the option to set due dates and reminders as well. And this video is in no way sponsored by Trello. Their service has helped me a lot, which is why I'm sharing it with you. It's also completely free to sign up as well. I plan to make a more in-depth video on how I manage my top priorities, all my freelance work, and everything that I do. 
there's way more that goes into being a successful freelancer than you realize. Your consistency, work ethic, and resilience are so critical. Starting today, make changes in your life that will elevate you to where you want to be. When I first started freelancing, I searched for top freelance profiles for earnings and reviews, and I used those as motivation. Everyone wants to see examples of people who have made it in their industry and reached the highest levels. My goal is to be that for you as a freelancer, to show you that a kid from a rural area in central Kentucky who grew up on a farm can become one of the most successful and top earning freelancers on Upwork. Your potential is far greater than you know. I was fortunate to have the best mom that you could ever imagine. She was selfless and cared more about her family than herself. She passed away in 2014 after a tough battle with leukemia. Losing her really changed me. Losing someone that close and important to you really makes you realize that tomorrow isn't promised. Every day is a blessing and an opportunity for you to go after whatever you want in life. For me, that's helping people all around the world achieve success, being a positive impact on everyone that I meet, and being the best person that I can be for my fiance and my family. You only get one shot at life, so take advantage of it. Your goals, aspirations, and ambitions for life are likely different from mine, and they should be. Whatever your ideal life looks like, whatever that may be, go after it. Starting today, put in the work, put in the grind, leave a positive impact on the world, and you already know what's coming next, let's get to work. On this end screen, I recommend checking out these videos, and be sure to hit that round subscribe button for weekly tech videos, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you for watching, and until next time. Yeah, jungle and the juice, man. I can feel the heat, yeah. I can feel the heat, man. I can feel the heat.